So you can see there the different activity types um, that you can do. If I go back up to here, the, the Billy Goat Scrum example wasn't based on a score. It was based on a choice of the direction of where the students were going to go. That's called a menu page. And when I come to a menu page, I can drag items out. And this now, when I click on there, is item A. And this one, when I click on here, is item B. And this one, when I click on here, is item C. How do you remember that? You can actually just click down there and it'll actually, I'll show you which one is which. Okay, in the same way too, when I was in this activity, or say this one, if you forget which one pairs with which, the students can also just click on, or when you're creating, you can actually just click onto there and I'll show you that drag item one goes with drop zone one. So you can actually keep a kind of track of where things are. It can get a bit messy when you've got maybe 10 things on the plate on the table, uh, on, the, on your page, and you need to know where they go. Similar to that uh, digestive system activity where I was uh, putting the labels of the body parts into different things. We're going back to the menu page here. So that's A, that's B, that's C. So as the students click onto there, they'll be sent down path with part A. If I go back to my sequencer, the one that I've created, just delete this. If I get now, get my, now get my menu page and place, so this is part A, this is going to be part B, and this is going to be part C. And you can see rather than dropping in, rather than dropping in numbers there, it actually drops in the letters. So that and so that's where the score doesn't become important. It's just the pathways that they're choosing to take along that journey. So you, you've gone along and you, you've created your activity. Now at the end. Up here you've got a number of different ways that you can save this activity. Now one of the real benefits of this and where this is uh, real well positioned is that things like one-to-one uh, -one netbooking, um, learn, as I mentioned earlier, learning management systems. And generally, rather than having to put fuse on all those machines, okay, what we want to be able to do is put into a format that those machines already can read. Okay, and, that, and that, in this case, is, is Flash. If I uh, go to Publish Standalone, I'll just go to my desktop, click OK. What that does now is automatically exports that as a, as a flash file. And to put it onto my desktop in a moment, there we go. It's pretty quick. I'll just turn around a bit easier. Keep things open here. Okay, so there it is there. And I can just open that. So you can see now it's just a, it's opening up, it's using the, uh, my Internet Explorer to open it up. When I go through to my Internet Explorer, there's the activity just sitting there within that. Also what you can do is a lot of your interactive whiteboard software, or most interactive whiteboard software, supports Flash as well. So what you can actually do with this, if you wanted to use it in your interactive whiteboard, and where this is, a lot of teachers are jumping on board with this, is that they have that, that challenge where you're doing something on your interactive whiteboard, and then you want the students to continue with a similar activity or the same activity at their computers. And they can't necessarily, unless their licensing allows them to, they maybe can't put their interactive whiteboard software across all their, their netbooks or across all their classroom computers. So what they'll do is they'll create an activity in Fuse, which they just use for their interactive whiteboard software, and I'll show you how to do that. And then they can actually just give that, same, that very same activity. So it's not something that's similar. It's that same activity that students continue with at their netbooks or at their, at their computers or on the learning management system there. And they have that real progression going from the IWB to what they're doing as well on their computers. But I'll just show you here. If I open up my... Um, it's a, this is just Easy Teach, which is a type of interactive whiteboard software. I can just actually, so the way that Easy Teach works is so that you browse by the multimedia bank. But if I browse to my desktop, oh, there it is, sequence mass, the activity automatically appears there. I can click and drag because it's just a flash file, and I can now work with that inside my interactive whiteboard software. Okay? The benefit of doing this, as well as, as well as actually going through the activity and attempting the activity and, and being able to work with it interactively that way, is I can grab my pens and also use the outside here to be taking notes and be, uh, to be annotating and talking about what the information on, within the flash activity is actually, is actually doing there. The other alternative, so that's the first alternative, is, is to save it as a flash file. The, the other alternative, and I mentioned this earlier, is to export this as SCORM. 
so it works with both types of SCORM, so uh, 1.2 and probably uh, most, most systems now are working with SCORM 2004. Has anyone got a, or using SCORM with their learning management systems at all? Yep, so a few people. Things like the Learning Federation objects, they're SCORM. So it works in very much the same way, all the digital learning, the digital objects are, are SCORM. Um, so it's probably something you might be using, but you're just not aware that you're actually using a file type which is called SCORM then. Um, one of the real benefits of SCORM, apart from the ability that it's, uh, it does that outputting of scores to your VLE, so once the students actually complete the activity, it will output the score. One of the other real benefits is that if you, are having a, if you have a content management system like a Moodle or a StudyWiz or, or something like that at your school, you don't want duplication of files on there because what, what quickly happens is that you start to have terabyte after terabyte of all this information sitting on there and it becomes quite costly. SCORM, if, you, if someone goes to, if I put up this activity for example, and then someone the next day goes to put in the same activity, SCORM identifies that. And what it says is, okay, I won't put it up a second time, it's the same file that's sitting somewhere else on this, within this content management system, I'll just point to that particular same file there. So it's a much more efficient way to work in regards to this um, digital content or learning content. So when I export this, so I'll just export this SCORM. Again, I'll just do it to my desktop. What it does, it basically just, it's a zip file. I'm going to give it a name. Blah, blah, blah. And you can see, again, it happens really quick. Okay, maybe just quick. And eventually, just, here we go. It'll just sit on my desktop. And there's just a zip file there. And that's what I would upload to my <coughs> content management system or my learning management system or my mood or whatever it is that I'm working with there. Okay. Uh, and again, if you link that to a markup, you can have that score out, um, automatically shot out. Now, Fuse is actually probably about 12 months old, probably only about, um, probably about six months in Australia. Um, it, comes out of, it comes out of the UK, and there is actually a Fuse Creator website, which is fusecreator.com. And the reason I'm pointing you to this is there actually is a place where you can download Fuse lessons um, for that for free. Um, but you actually need Fuse to run it. So what you've got in front of you is a 30-day trial. And so what I suggest you do in the next 30 days is download, put the trial onto your computer and download as many of the lessons which are relevant to you, export them as a flash file, and then there's no reason to actually have the software unless you really want to create your own beyond that. Um, because of, that's also one of the other issues with licensing. Once the, the activity is, is exported to a flash file, it's your creation. It's a flash file. There's no licensing restrictions on that. So you can place it across any number of computers within your school. Now, to make any changes, if you, for example, have go to, a, go to the website and you download some, an activity, you think it's, you know, it's there but it's not quite right, you'll need to make changes to it and save it again. And to do so, you actually need to, you'll need to add a code into when you install the software. So if you've got a pen and paper, I actually wanted to put it on a sticker on the back of the disk that are there, or even put it on the brochure, but I didn't get a chance. Um, but where do I put it? Yeah. If you just write that, that code, I'll read it out. Um, it's all capitals, um, and it's F C T R M Y six three four D P nine. 6-5 double M for Mary. And so when you install the, the trial or when you install the disk that's available there on, on the tables, and I think I ran out towards the back, so if you want one at the back, there's plenty of like going at the front at the end of the session, you can come and grab one. Uh, when you install that, at the start, it'll ask you to enter a user, user license key, and that's the, that's the user license key that you need to enter. And what that will allow you to do is not only to work with it, but to save anything that you do. It still only will apply for 30 days, um, and then beyond that 30 days, um, obviously, it will lock you out beyond that 30 days unless you were to uh, go ahead and, and purchase the software. But as I said, within that 30 days, go mad um, downloading as much as you can if it's relevant to what you're doing within your schools. Uh, one of the other things, I can see how good my internet connection is on in here as well. I've spoken to it very much about um, the students using this, uh, sorry, from teachers using this. Um, but where this has been, we've seen this to be most powerful is where students are actually using this. Um, and so rather than using it, creating, say, an oral presentation using PowerPoint or, or, or something of, of similar keynote, um, they're actually using 
fuse to create a, a presentation which they can then deliver to their other their peers to actually have a go at doing. And it becomes much more of an interactive presentation. So here I am talking about the planets. How about Johnny, you come and order the planets behind me while I talk about this? And it's actually interactive and working that way. And so this is a little video. It is very UK orientated. Well, it's very it's English, obviously. Um, but let's see how if we can get this video up and running. But it's just some, I think a, a nice little video that just shows um, how students could get out of, out of the use out of this. And in fact, it's, in this case, it's a year four student. So we'll see how good my internet connection is. That's not too bad. Um, and we've had other, other examples here where year six, year six, um, like year six prep buddy program, they'll do the activity together with their buddies, and at the end of the week, or at the end of the session, they'll take that activity and they'll use that, for example, through their literacy groups the next week. And actually, the preps will actually can, can do the activities. So, um, also, just one last thing. If you if also through the Fuse Create website, and all this is um, free to join up. There is actually an e-course. So once you actually start using it. There is actually an e-course which is online, which is a tutorial that takes you through how to use the software. Um, so as well as um, you know, having the software to use and, and the training manuals and stuff, there is an e-course which has little videos and things like that, little hints and tips of how you could actually um, get the most out of Fuse as well. Are there any questions about what we've looked at today? Yes? Um, uh, no. No. So I think iPad, does iPad support Flash? No. So it is, it is flash, so it is, I can't be using that. Can you import backgrounds to the activities? Yep. So like if you design your kids doing their own backgrounds, it could be more than Yeah. So when you, um, I'll go back to here, I'll just do a new page. So this is actually a background here. So when you click onto there, and you drag it, you click on it, you can, there are some backgrounds that you can use already. And then that becomes a background, and you can stretch it to the size that you want. <coughs> and then if you then if you do things out of the top, the background is now locked. And if you want to, you can select background and then change it again, and then click away from it again. Click away from it. Again, so I think it is. So do you use what PSG files that you can make in the background and then picture that you want to disable them? Correct, yes. Yeah, you can just overlay things. So yeah, the example might be, like I mentioned earlier, like a map and then the other things, and the map just becomes the background there. 